I am Marwa Al Khalaf, and this is the Great British Chef's signature series. Iranian cuisine doesn't have like a Western style dessert, but this one is actually inspired by a pretty four style dessert, which is the Rangina. We try to bring in dishes that are not really familiar to a lot of people. For me, that's the beauty of the Iranian cuisine. There's a lot of hidden gems to discover. When I used to come to London, I couldn't find any restaurants that I thought gave the Iranian cuisine its justice. So I really wanted to open a place where I could share the other side of the Iranian cuisine with Londoners. Hi there, my name is Marwa al Chef Director at Nacho London, and today I will be sharing my Ranginek tart recipe with you. The key part to this Ranginek and what makes it Ranginek is the toasted flour. The reason why we toast the flour is just to give it a bit of nuttiness without actually having to add any nuts to it. So with this step, you need to take your time, make sure that you continuously stir the pot so you would dry toast it without actually burning the flour. This process will take 15 to 20 minutes, but unfortunately you do have to put in the time because without it, you're not going to have a rangina. I've been toasting the flour for 20 minutes now, and if you see the difference between the white spatula and the color of the flour, that's when your flour is toasted and ready. Just let it cool before you move on to the next process, which is making the dough of the tarts. I'm gonna mix it with the sh caster sugar, my soft cube butter, and just gonna crumble the dough until it resembles a wet sand. When we first opened, we wanted to push the boundaries with the green cuisine, and when we were awarded the Michelin plate, we really were over the moon. It just confirmed that we are on the right path and that's why right now we're trying to push the boundary even further and maybe one day get a start as well. The dough is now ready. It's uh, like a wet sand. Now you just need to add your wet element. Just add your egg yolk and bring the dough all together. Try not to over knead it. All you need to do is just make sure that the dough comes together and that's when you can stop. If your dough is a bit dry, you can add a bit of cold water to it just to bring it together and then you're set to go. So when your dough is ready, just wrap it in cling film and let it rest in your fridge for 20 to 30 minutes and then it will be ready for you to work with it. So the pastry has rested for 30 minutes in the fridge. I just took it out. So right now I'm just uh, rolling my dough. After that, I will be shaping it into my tart. I was born in a city on the eastern part of Saudi, so I grew up by the sea, literally. And because both sides of the Persian Gulf have been influenced by the trading, the food that I grew up eating is exactly the same as the food that southern Iranians eat. This is why, for me, Iranian cuisine wasn't really a strange cuisine. There are a lot of things that I'm already familiar with, a lot of dishes, a lot of flavors, a lot of ingredients that I already grew up eating in Saudi. I've cut the pastry, lined my uh, tart molds, and now I'm just going to line bake it at 170 degrees for about 10 minutes. So while the pastry is baking in the oven, you can start working on your filling. Try and find soft dates that would be ideal for this dish. If they're a bit dry, what you can do is just soak them in some hot water and then drain them and straight into the blender. So right now I just added the egg yolks, the date molasses. I would also add the brown sugar and the soft butter. A splash of good quality vanilla and then just blend everything until it's smooth. So I just took out my tart shells out of the oven. They look crispy and beautiful, and I'm just gonna chill them down while I finish my filling. So everything is blended right now. This is the consistency that you're looking for. I'm just gonna fold in my double cream, and then my filling is ready. So right now, I'll just get a couple of pistachio kernels, put them there for a lovely surprise when you're eating your tart. And after that, you just need to pour in your filling to cover it and then bake your tarts. Now I'm just gonna take them to the oven, bake them at 155 degrees for 15 minutes or until the filling is set. 
So while the tarts are baking in the oven, you can prepare your spice cream fresh. All you need is to mix your cream fresh with some cinnamon or some cardamom if you like the flavor of the cardamom. Personally, I like to add in some rose as well. I think it adds a really nice flavor to it. So the tarts are now out of the oven. I'm just gonna wait for them to chill and then I'm going to cut them and garnish them. I'm gonna start by putting some uh, pistachio powder on top. Uh, just to add a bit of crunch and a nice green color to it. And to serve it, just put a dollop of uh, your cream fresh on the side. This tart is a bit sweet, so for me the cream fresh is just breaks the sweetness of it in a nice way. And garnish it with some rose petals. Here we are, this is my Rangina tart with spiced cream fresh.